Hi, I'm Nathan and welcome to Ninja Monkey, the place for all things related to Japan, where I'm currently focusing on what's going on behind Japan's closed borders. My aim in this video is to put all the readily available information into one place and make it easy for you to follow. Here are some stories that didn't make it into my last video and a shorter format midweek roundup of some of the things that have been happening behind Japan's closed borders so that you can make informed decisions leading to answering the question, when will Japan's border open? As always, I will continue to include additional stories, vaccine and other stats in my weekly review video at the end of the week and expand on some of these stories too. So make sure that you're subscribed and your notifications are turned on so that you don't miss anything. And as always, all links are included in the video description so that you can do your own reading if you wish to. Timestamps are also available for your convenience too. With the Paralympics having just started, it's good to see that potentially it might bring along some positive change once the games are over. Railway operators are working towards allowing people in wheelchairs to take a train without the aid of any station staff members. Although I have personally experienced wheelchair users boarding trains in Japan in what always seems to be quite an efficient manner, this usually relies on the help of staff members setting up ramps to aid the user. So it's great to see that efforts are being made to reduce vertical steps between train floors and platforms and horizontal gaps between trains and platforms so that wheelchair users can get on and off trains by themselves. I hope that this brings additional change for a more accessible friendly Japan in the future. The Japan Direct Marketing Association, the JADMA, have announced that sales of online and catalogue shopping in Japan topped 10 trillion yen that's 90 billion US dollars for the first time in 2020 as people use the internet or telephones to order and buy food, home appliances, furniture, as they refrained from going out and working from home. I'm sure that there have been many similar stories around the world regarding the success of online sales. When speaking to my Japanese friends, one of the things that they mention as a positive from the state of emergency and COVID restrictions in Japan has been the way that the food and restaurant industry has changed by offering delivery options. With many restaurants and stores that originally didn't deliver, changing course and now delivering therefore making it even more convenient to eat from your favorite restaurant. Have any of you had similar experiences in your countries? Do you feel that you are more reliant on online shopping and home delivery? Do you see this as a positive or a negative thing? I would love to know your thoughts on this one. I, for one, love the convenience and safety of ordering in, but at the same time, there's nothing like a busy izakaya and hanging out with the locals. This next story is a little infuriating. The fact that students and even people separated from their loved ones continue to be denied entry into Japan, but yet Kiefer Ravenna, a Filipino professional basketball player, is able to enter Japan leaving on the 25th of August to process necessary requirements needed for his B-League stint with the Shinga Lake Stars is mind-blowing. I do understand that these individuals are able to enter Japan under a special circumstances immigration exemption. However, students continue to be caught in the difficult situation of not being able to enter or make plans about the future. Some students having to wait and others taking online courses with some having to wake up early in the morning to complete Zoom sessions. Perhaps it's time to include students in the list of special circumstances. The fact that government sponsored students and JET candidates are allowed entry must make it even more frustrating for those waiting to enter. A source of mine who is entering Japan on the JET program has shared the entry requirements, which seem to be quite similar to the current entry requirements. All JET applicants will need to quarantine regardless of vaccine status. Some might need to isolate for a minimum of three days at a government chosen hotel, depending on the country or state of origin. During the special quarantine, applicants cannot leave the room for any reason, but after three days, if they are healthy and negative, they can move around the hotel. So. I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts regarding special circumstances for entry into Japan. Students, how long have you been waiting to enter? And those with loved ones waiting to be reunited, what is helping you cope? And finally, a quick update regarding numbers in Tokyo and nationwide. Osaka Prefecture reported a record 2,808 fresh cases, while Tokyo logged 4,228. Tokyo for infections are down by 1,158 from the previous Wednesday and the seven-day average of new cases over the week of August 25th came to 4,471. That's 4.8% 4 less than the previous week. Additionally, the number of tests conducted daily from August 22nd to August 24th 
average 13,908. I will release more in-depth updates as always in the weekend, but at least you can paint a small picture of what's going on. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching this far and staying tuned. If you're still watching, then hopefully it means that you like the video. So please support me by pressing the like button as it does tell YouTube that you're interested in this type of content. Let's get a conversation started in the comment section. I do try to respond to as many as you can and I'd love to know your thoughts. Till next time, arigato gozaimasu, gracias, thanks, bye, see you at the weekend. Thank <laughs> you.